My name is Maurice Tomlinson, and I was born and raised in Jamaica. I attended two all-boys high schools, and I was scared every day I went to school because I am gay, and I'm also gender non-conforming. And these are two things which are not accepted in my society. High school boys can be mean, and I thought that if my classmates ever discovered my dirty little secret, they would attack me, or possibly kill me. So, every morning I got up, I told myself I was going to be straight that day. I would stand in front of the mirror, try to hold myself upright, deepen my voice, and promise myself that I would have no gay thoughts that day. Needless to say, at some point during the day, I would either say something or do something which people would identify as being gay. And I also had many gay thoughts. I belonged to a very fundamentalist church, which taught me that being gay was an abomination and I was destined to hell. So at the end of each school day, I felt so worthless that many times I actually contemplated taking my own life. I didn't do that, obviously, but I became something I truly regret. I became a bully, and I was savage to everyone, including members of the LGBT family I now hold dear. In fact, I think I was particularly savage to LGBT people because by doing so, I thought that I would deflect from myself any suspicion of being gay. Of course, everybody saw through that ruse. I was also harsh to straight females. I don't know why. There's one young lady who I was so mean to that I reduced her to tears. And although she eventually became a close friend and said she forgave me, I don't think I will ever forgive myself. The image of her bawling her eyes out just because of what I had said still haunts me to this day. At university, I was able to lead a double life. I had my straight friends and I had my gay friends. And I thought that my straight friends did not know or suspect about my homosexuality. So I went in and out of the closet like a ping pong ball for years. It turns out my straight friends all suspected, but they cared too much to say anything. I met a wonderful young lady and after 10 years we got married. We thought that because I was so deeply involved in the church and because I was having a heterosexual marriage, then all my homosexual desires would be gone. I had been the church youth leader at high school and I did the same thing at university. Then I became a member of the choir and I was teaching Sunday school when I was married. So. Being so heavily involved in my faith and also undergoing the ex-gay cure, I thought that there was no way I was going to have any more need or interest or desire to engage in homosexual activities. Of course, all of that was a farce and my marriage collapsed. I ended up hurting a wonderful friend and even though I have a son, I rarely get to see him now. And I destroyed a marriage and a family simply because I couldn't lie about who I am any longer. When my marriage failed, I decided that I was going to try and prevent anybody else from enduring the kind of pain and hardship that I did. I therefore went to work for a wonderful organization called AIDS Free World, where we are trying to eliminate homophobia from the Caribbean through challenging anti-gay laws, public policy, and homophobic sentiments. The impact of homophobia in the Caribbean is very, very evident in the fact that the region 
has possibly the highest HIV prevalence rate among men who have sex with men, MSM, worldwide. And this is because this vulnerable group is driven underground, away from effective HIV prevention, treatment, care, and support interventions. Another project that I'm working on is called Duane's House, where we are trying to provide a home, food, and shelter for some Jamaican LGBT youth who were kicked out, some as young as 10 years old, simply because they are different. Many of these kids now live in sewers and are forced to sell sex to survive. They are also paid extra by their rich, married male clients to have condomless sex, and this increases their vulnerability to HIV. Another project I work on now, I do with my husband, Reverend Tom Decker, and my organization, AIDS Free World, has been so gracious to allow us to travel around the Caribbean to train police officers on LGBT sensitivity. Tom was the LGBT liaison officer for the Toronto Police Service, where he developed this fantastic program that we're now using to train police on how to respond to transphobic and homophobic violence with greater sensitivity. My life has been very full and rewarding, and I'm very happy I did not take my life when I was much younger. I have been able to travel extensively. I have been to the White House. I've met the president and shaken his hand. I have also been to the UK and spoken at their parliament. I have been to the UN and spoken there. And in 2011, I was so privileged to be awarded the first David Cato Vision and Voice Award, which celebrates the life, legacy, and work of that visionary Ugandan LGBT and HIV activist, David Cato, who was savagely murdered three years ago. I'm also part of a fantastic church where my husband is the interim pastor. Open Arms MCC in Rochester, New York, is where we can authentically celebrate our love and our faith without any kind of judgment. There are many such churches now, if you are faith inclined. I'm making this video because I want to encourage anyone who is contemplating any kind of self-harming behavior because they are LGBT to understand that you are special. In fact, you're amazing. You have a wonderful gift. Do not let anybody tell you otherwise. You also have a wonderful tool. Social media is an amazing way to reach out and get information, assistance, resources that can help you to understand what you're going through and to overcome it. It can get better. It's in your hands to make it better. If you wish, you can also contact me. Again, I'm Maurice Tomlinson. And if I do not have the answers you seek, I can point you in the right direction. And I can be found on Facebook. When I was growing up, these amazing tools, these social media connectivities did not exist. So I ended up making mistakes which you don't have to make. Believe me, you are fabulous. And I ask that you do one thing. Go out and let the world know. And make this entire globe amazing because you were here.